Hello, I'm Mark Taylor. I've been given the privilege of introducing the Stations of the Cross, which will be delivered by students from our diocesan schools in this, our second virtual Lord's Pilgrimage. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus asks each of us to renounce ourselves, take up our cross every day and follow him. Furthermore, on the eve of his death, he asked his disciples to unite with him and recognize his presence in memory of what he'd accomplished. Our contemplations, as we make our way through the Stations of the Cross, allow us to do this, giving us a way to follow in his footsteps. Each station gives us an opportunity to unite ourselves to our Lord. And it's also important to consider Mary's example as we make this journey, looking in our hearts to consider the events related to Jesus' passion and death. I'll now hand over to some of our young people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We gather to accompany Jesus on his journey to the cross of our redemption. As we take each painful step with our blessed Saviour, we contemplate the sacrifices he made, the suffering he endured, and the immensity of his everlasting love for us. We ask God to open our hearts to receive the graces he freely gives to us so that we may live in the service of others just as Jesus taught us by his earthly ministry. The first station Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no, no further reply, and Pilate was amazed. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, had Jesus flogged, and handed him over to be crucified. Jesus, the innocent victim, remained faithful to his mission despite the torment he knew he must endure. Silently accepting his fate, offering himself as a sacrifice for our redemption, he shouldered the weight of our sins in the form of his cross. Saviour, thank you for suffering for us, for your mercy and eternal love. Increase our faith in you and guide us to be your hands and feet in the world. Amen. I love you. Jesus, my love above all things, and I repent with my whole heart of having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The second station, Jesus carries the cross. Jesus is fought. I could hardly stand on the weight of the cross. It was so heavy. It wasn't just the weight of the wood, although that was bad enough. It was thinking about the events that had led up to this moment, the mock trial, the mob clamoring for my blood, the jeers and the rough treatment by the soldiers guarding me. And worst of all, being betrayed by Judas, one of my best friends, and abandoned by those closest to me. When it came to the crunch, Peter, my right hand man, denied three times that he even knew me. And I recalled all these things they added to the weight of the cross and made it even harder to bear. 
Sometimes we can be so wrapped up in our own lives that we don't notice the needs of those around us. We prefer to go to have fun rather than stay with a friend who's feeling down and needs someone to talk to. We see news reports of starving children or communities torn apart by violence and war and we just turn a, turn a blind eye and switch to another channel. Dear Lord, make us more aware of the problems and needs that burden our friends and family and all the people near and far. Open our hearts and give us the desire to journey with them and help carry their load. Amen. Station 3, Jesus falls for the first time. It was difficult to carry the cross. It was such an awkward shape and unbelievably heavy. I was already weak from the beatings, but the soldiers kept pushing me along. All of a sudden, I lost my footing and stumbled, fell straight to the ground. Both my knees were cut and my hands were badly grazed. The pain was awful, but they just laughed at me and pushed me roughly, jeering and shouting at me to get up again. That was just the start of it. It was nothing compared to what was coming later. I felt such a fool and in front of everyone too. But if you asked me, I would go through it all again. I would say, yes, it was worth it to save them. Even the ones who were tormenting me, yes, I would do it all again. There's, mo there's nothing more humiliating than falling down in front of other people. You just want to crawl to a hole and stay there until everyone has gone away. It's not actually just falling down. We also fall every time we look stupid in front of our classmates or friends. Every time we are made fun of for not saying or doing the right thing or not wearing the right clothes. Every time we don't fit in and we knock other people down every time we leave them out just because they are different. Then our unkind words and deeds make us fall further still. Lord, help us to, to look with kindness on people who don't fit in and to be there to support our friends and family whenever they may fall. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, for by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simeon said to Mary, You see this child, he is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Mary is at the side of the road. She gives Jesus courage and she accompanies him right to the end. Their eyes meet, full of love for each other. Just by being there, she helps him with the strength of her love. Mary's heart is pierced with sorrow, but she is still full of hope because she knows he is the Son of God. Lord Jesus, forgive us the many times our eyes have met and we turned away. Forgive us the times that things did not go our way and we let everyone know about it. Forgive us the times we brooded over little inconveniences or became discouraged. Lord Jesus, teach us how to follow you. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, for by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They seized on a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and made him shoulder the cross and carry it behind Jesus. Jesus is so tired that the soldiers know that he cannot carry the heavy cross by himself. They look around and see someone who looks strong enough to help Jesus. Simon did not have a choice. Like Simon, we can help others carry their crosses. We can soothe their hurts and be kind when they are upset. Lord Jesus, let us to remember the times when we have refused to help one another. Show us how to look around and notice when others need our help 
and then have the courage to be there for them. Dear Lord, remind us that when we are helping others, we are helping you. Amen. the sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, we praise you. Because by your holy cross, cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me in prison and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Psalm 34. Now that I have fallen, they gather around me delighted. They crowd about, jeer at me. They take me by surprise, strike me, and tear me to pieces. They provoke me with their mockery and their jibes, as they gnash at my te their teeth with me. Continue me falling and getting up again is a story of our journey to God. We try, we get it wrong. We get back up and try again. Jesus, who was sinless and innocent, also had to make our effort to stand up once more and continue his journey to the cross. No matter how many times we fall, each time we get back up and we will encounter the mercy of God. Lord of the journey, you know how deeply we fall and how often we become discouraged by our own obstinacy and short-sightedness. Be with us on our pilgrimage of life. Reach out to catch us and raise us up in the warmth of your loving embrace. We pray for those who have suffered a relapse of their illness, for those who are enjoying a period of remission, for those who are going to find it hard to keep going. Lord, in your mercy. Hear I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I will love you and never do it. And do with me. The Ape Station, Jesus meets the woman of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Large numbers of people followed him, and many women too, who mourned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. Even in the middle of his pain and suffering, Jesus holds up holds out hope to the woman of Jerusalem, yet he warns them not to just mourn that was happening, but to look at what is really going on and see what this means for posterity. We are the children of those women, and Jesus, called to repentance, is made to us today, just as it was the women he met on the road to the cross. God of truth, we acknowledge our sins and our faults are always before us. Give us the grace to see those ways which lead us into darkness, and to grant us the wisdom to turn our steps towards your light. We pray for those who take the blame for, our, for the faults of others and those who fail to speak in the defence of the innocent. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always and then do with me what you will.
the ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by our holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the first letter of Peter. He had not done anything wrong, and there had not been no perjury in his mouth. He was insulted and did not retaliate with insults. When he was tortured, he made no threats, but put his trust in the righteous judge. He was bearing our faults in his own body on the cross, so that we might die to our faults and live for holiness. Through his wounds you have been healed. You have gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The indignity for Jesus of falling for the third time is matched only by our frequent falling away from him. He freely chose a path of obedience and self-denial. We fall from him by our half-hearted following of the gospel, by our half-tech promises of fidelity, and by putting our own comfort before Christ of Christian faith. Lord, for the times when I have accused others falsely, for the times I have been untruthful and for the times I have retaliated unjustly, I am sorry. Help me, Lord, to be more like you in all I think, say and do. We pray for those who have fallen in a coma, those who have suffered from chronic and painful illness, and for all doctors and nurses and all healthcare professionals, well in your mercy. Hear my prayer. I look to you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you do. one for each of them, but as the tunic was woven in one piece from top to bottom, they said, Let us not tear it, but cast lots to decide who will get it. This fulfills the words of the scripture, They divided my clothing among them, they cast lots on my garment. Jesus is stripped of his clothes, as if I hadn't already suffered enough. Now they tear my clothes away from me leaving me naked or exposed. They taught me, calling me a king, but now I am worse than the poorest beggar in the land. But all this must be endured to show them how much I love them, how much I still love them, despite everything that has happened. Every harsh word, every beating, every indignity, I do this to you. Jesus teaches us that life is so much more important than the things we own. We all want to look good, to have the latest gadgets and keep up with the latest fashion. We all want to fit in with the crowd. But there's a danger of labels and gadgets taking over and hiding away our true identity. Underneath the clothes, who are you? Can you let the real you shine through? Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by, by your cross, cross you, you have redeemed the world. world. People passing by shook their heads and insulted him, saying, Aha, so you will destroy the temple and build it up again in three days. Now save yourself and come down from the cross, if you are the Son of God. Jesus is nailed to the cross. I must... Nor I must find it in my heart to forgive my tormentors. 
They are only playing their part in this unfolding drama. But surely they know I am innocent of the charges against me. Unlike the criminals who hang either side of me, one of them mocks me, urging me to call on God to save me, if I really am his son. But the other stops him, saying they deserve their fate. He asks for my mercy and forgiveness. I am touched by his humility. It will earn him a place in heaven today. Often, it's easier to stand by and say nothing, even when you know something is wrong. To hide your embarrassment with a joke or a throwaway remark, but there is, there is another option. We, get, we can choose to speak out for what is right, just like the good thief did. Lord, we pray that we will always value the truth, even when voicing it comes at a cost to our own pride. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And when it came to the sixth hour, darkness came on the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus shouted with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Leva, Sebastiani, which, when it is translated, is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing started to say, Look, he is calling on Elijah. And someone ran with a sponge filled with vinegar and put it round his stick and gave him to drink, saying, Wait, let's see if Elijah is going to turn him down. But Jesus, letting out a great shout, expired. After this, Jesus, knowing that already everything was brought to perfection, in order that the scripture might be perfected, I say, I first. A vessel lay there full of wine vinegar. And so, wrapping a sponge full of the vinegar on a piece of high soap, offered it to his mouth. And when he had taken the vinegar, Jesus said, It is accomplished, and clanging his head, he handed over the spirit. Here we have two separate views of Jesus' death, from Mark and from the Gospel of John. For Mark, the death is much bleaker. God's view of it indicated by the darkness on, on the whole land. Jesus' view seems to be that God has utterly abandoned him, except that three, we three times heard him predict that after his death he will be raised again. Even at the end he is misunderstood, and when he was calling on God they thought he was summoning Elijah. John's Gospel offers us a much more regal death. Jesus is in total charge, knowing is a favourite word. Of the fourth evangelist, he announces his first, as he had long ago in chapter 4, to the Samaritan woman, who he, whom he asked for a drink, which he never received. Jesus announced that all is accomplished or perfected, and graciously, graciously bowed his head and handed over the spirit. Does it matter to you that there are two different views of Jesus' death in the gospel? Have you ever known two different accounts of people's deaths, how, and how will it be at your own death? of Jesus was taken from the cross and laid in his mother's arms. We adore you, O Christ, and bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. There is nothing in the gospel about Jesus being laid in his mother's arm, but
But since John and his mother were standing at the foot of the cross, it is far like unlikely, and it was woman work in the culture to deal with the corpses um, for our gospel text. Here is another moment when Jesus was laid in his son's arms. Joseph was also went to from, up from Galilee, from the sea of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which was called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, to register along with Mary and his betrothed, who was pregnant. It came to pass while they were there that the days were fulfilled for her to give birth and she brought forth her son the first bomb and she wrapped him around in swathing blankets and laid him down in a feeding trough because there was no room in the lonely house this episode comes of course from the beginning of jesus life then it had been a roman emperor whose far away decision had driven Joseph and his fiance out of Nazareth down to Bethlehem. It is a shock to us to read that Joseph's fiance was pregnant, and it was shocking in the culture also. Nevertheless, we know that it is the shock that comes from God. But from confused to beginning to sad ending, this has been a shocking story, symbolised here by the fact the baby has now been put into a feeding trough and there's no room in the lodging house. Watch Mary as she twitches her child for the first time and places him in the open unpromising place. Then stand by her she receives the same body from the cross after his death and ask what is going on inside her. Can you put yourselves in Mary's place at either end of Jesus' life? What goes on in you as you watch these two moments, birth and dreadful death? Jesus is buried. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you yeah. have redeemed the world. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Ma, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Imagine your saviour being laid to rest. Imagine your saviour killed though love was all he expressed. Imagine not knowing he would rise once more. Imagine having to feel that pain and see his sore. Imagine knowing that his death was because of our sin. Imagine thinking that evil was going to win. Imagine knowing that Jesus was a healer, a teacher, a lover, a guider, a giver, a forgiver, but seeing him buried when no hate did he deliver. Lord, when life has heard us, help us to rise higher than them, to find our calling, whatever that may be. Help us to seek light in the dark times. Give us hope and the ability to act, to build, to escape trying times with the perseverance and determination. Guide us to the right path and uplift us, Lord. Amen. I love you, Jesus, with my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Early on the first.
first day of the week, whilst it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon, Peter, and the other disciples, the ones Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I don't know where they have put him. The blackbird is the first to sing his song. The moment the light of dawn illuminates the horizon, he sings. The wake-up call has started. The dormouse scuttles over the mounds of earth to the pond to drink. She knows the land off by heart, but this time it is different. The stone has been rolled away. The blackbird flies over, seeing all and knowing all. He sees the stone and immediately calls to the wrens, who call to the sparrows, to the wagtails, to the blue tits. All the same song, he is risen. Dear Lord, please help us to look after your world and to keep it as clean as it was on, the resurre on that resurrection day. Although we may live to and pollute, help us to change our ways and to work towards cleaning up the problems we have created. Amen. I love, I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. I'd like to thank the students of our schools for delivering the 15 stations with such poise and confidence. They're a credit to us. It's clear we're not meant to see the crucifixion as an end point. This isn't the focus of our faith. That focus is the understanding that Christ lives beyond the cross and calls us all beyond it as well. It's Christ's suffering and ultimately his resurrection that brings our faith to hold us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you share our struggles, our pain, our fear of death, and even death itself. Be with us in our sufferings. May we be witness to you through lives of prayer, love, and service. We ask this through you who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.